In this video, we'll go over the additional features found in QMix 5. QMix 5 will only run when an ultralight Mark 5 or other compatible Mode 2 interface is connected to the computer. So, make sure your device is plugged in and powered on for this video. Now, launch QMix 5. As discussed in the last video, the Home tab will show a picture of your Motu interface and some basic controls. Anything you change in QMix 5 will change on the interface. For instance, I can turn on Phantom Power, enable Pad, adjust Input Gain, and Output Volume. Below that, the Input Monitoring section will quickly patch live inputs directly to the outputs. For instance, I can press number 1 in my phone's row to patch mic 1 directly to my headphones. Check, check, 1, 2, check. On the Device tab, you'll find device settings like sample rate, clock source, and your loopback source. You'll also find additional features like pre-fader and post-fader metering options, and options to save and load device presets. The Input tab allows you to adjust the input level of any analog input on your device. You can also flip the phase of any analog input and monitor your SPDIF and optical input levels. By default, the Ultralight Mark V uses 8-channel ADAT optical. You can easily change this to 2-channel Toslink optical by clicking here. Similarly, the Outputs tab lets you adjust the output level of any analog output. By default, the main volume knob here in QMix 5 and on the front panel of the unit controls main outs 1 and 2. The main volume group lets you add additional outputs to the group, so you can also control a sub-channel or surround speakers with the main volume control. And just like the Inputs tab, you can monitor your SPDIF and optical outputs here. Now that we've gone over the basic controls of QMix 5, let's move on to the monitoring system. Basic monitoring can be found here in the Home tab in the Input Monitoring section. Here, you'll find two rows for Mainout 1 and 2 and Phones. Click the number for the input you'd like to hear. For instance, if I want to hear line inputs 3 and 4 through my main outs, I'd click 3 and 4 here. This patches the signal through the Ultralight Mark V from the inputs directly to the outputs so you can quickly hear yourself in real time. But what if you want to create a monitor mix? In the left hand sidebar, you'll find six possible mix buses and a reverb send. Click on Main 1 and 2 Mix to view the mix settings for the main outs. Use these faders to create a monitor mix that will be sent to the main outs on your interface. As you can see, the faders for inputs 3 and 4 have already been brought up from when I enabled them earlier in the Home tab. Those Home tab buttons are connected to their corresponding fader here in the Mix tab. Here's a quick tip. Double click the faders to automatically jump them to zero or back down to minus infinity. The fader on the far right of each mix controls the overall volume for that mix. You can also solo, mute, and pan your tracks to create the desired monitor mix for main out 1 and 2. And by the way, when a mix has soloed channels, you'll see this solo indicator here by its name in the sidebar. But let's say you're recording another person and they're recording using headphones. They might want a different monitor mix than what's going to the main outputs. So click on the phone's 1-2 mix tab. You now have the ability to create a separate mix for the person monitoring through the headphones. This concept repeats itself for the remaining mixes and becomes increasingly more useful as you begin to record more players. For example, 
Each one of these line output mixes could represent an external headphone monitor for each member of a band. Use each tab to adjust the headphone mix settings for each individual player without disrupting the raw signal being recorded in your DAW software. You'll also notice that each analog input channel has its own four-band parametric EQ. Additionally, each mix output has its own three-band parametric EQ. Below the EQ, you'll also find a dynamics option for each input, which consists of a gate and a compressor. Note that the changes made in the EQ in the dynamics windows are global. This means that the changes you make will be shared by every monitor mix. And finally, to add reverb, bring up the reverb bus fader in the mix. Then, click the reverb tab in the sidebar to access the reverb sends. Use the send faders in this tab to determine how much reverb to apply to each channel. Check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, check, check. To adjust the reverb parameters, click in the top right corner. Here, you can choose a small, medium, or large reverb setting, Check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two. With pre-delay, damping, decay, and width control. Check, check, one, two, check, check. One, two, check, check, 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 one, two, check, check. Once you've dialed in the settings you want, the reverb channel in each mix allows you to adjust the overall wet reverb level for that mix. As a reminder, QMix 5 only controls input monitoring. This means that all these controls only affect what you hear while monitoring live inputs. They do not affect the raw signal going to and from the computer. As another reminder, when using QMix 5 hardware monitoring, be sure to turn off audio patch through in your DAW software to avoid unwanted doubling of live input signals. In Performer Light, choose Studio Menu, Audio Patch Through, Off. You should now be ready to use QMix 5 in your compatible Motu interface. For any questions, please consult the other videos in this series or your interface manual. Thanks for watching.